New shocking study, 75% of teens fall away from the church. We've all heard these kinds of statistics before. But what's behind them? Understanding why youth leave the church. This week on Creation Magazine Live. Welcome to Creation Magazine Live. My name is Richard Fangrad. And I'm Matt Bondi. Now, this week on Creation Magazine Live, our topic is understanding why youth leave the church. Understanding why it is that so many young people from Christian homes continue to fall away from the faith of their parents. And yes, there is a solution to prevent young people from leaving the church and growing in their walk with Christ. We'll tell you what it is after explaining why they're leaving in the first place. Now, there's been many polls conducted about why people are leaving the church in droves. You can see some of the results here. Uh, these cover a range of denominations in both the USA and Canada, and the most sh shocking thing is how high these percentages are. Yes, yep. These are children that have grown up in Christian homes and gone to church. Massive numbers walk away from Christianity in their early 20s. That's right, yeah. And I think when Christian parents see these kinds of percentages, there's kind of a, like a paralyzation that sets in. They, they just don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Um, or, or they think, well, this is such a massive problem that a solution must be really complex or logistically impossible, uh, too big to handle. In any case, they, they feel powerless to kind of make any difference yeah. at all. Yeah, and along with that, there's a hope that uh, this falling away won't apply to their congregation or their children. Right. But yeah. we see this everywhere we go yeah. uh, in Creation Ministries with our seven offices around the world, ourselves included. We visit hundreds of churches each year. And at most events, there's at least one parent that relates how they tried their best uh, with their children, but now they're not interested in God and Christianity. It's, it's really heartbreaking. It is, yeah. And, and there are no doubt some of you watching who've experienced exactly this kind of thing. It's very difficult. Uh, reaching those people who have a church background but have turned away, now that's not the focus of today's show. Our focus today is how can we prevent it from happening in the first place? How can we, as Christian parents and church leaders, make a difference in the future of the church? And is there even a solution to this? Right. Yeah. Now, in 2016, CMI produced a documentary called Fallout. Yes. We conducted interviews with students on university campuses, and we found a very interesting pattern. We did, yeah. The interviews show that the majority of young people who were not exposed to apologetics teaching and specifically evidences for biblical creation in their youth now embrace evolution and no longer attend church. But every student that was interviewed who was equipped with answers as a young person still retains their Christian convictions in spite of the, the evolutionary teaching that they receive in higher education. Yeah, better still, every student interviewed who affirmed biblical, biblical creation still attends church regularly. Yes. Now, you might be thinking, are you saying that if you teach people evidences for biblical creation, they absolutely won't fall away from the church? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like it's some cure-all solution for every situation? No, that's not what we're saying. <laughs> but we, I mean, we all know that that's not the case. Uh, you might recall Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he'll not depart from it. But given the nature of Proverbs, it doesn't mean that in every single case this will happen. But as a huge trend, yes, there is a correlation between young people being equipped with solid apologetics and them staying in the church. Yeah, and that's yeah. not really surprising, is it, no. when you think of it? Um, you know, evolution is this concept that teaches that we can explain everything without a creator. So learning about the massive amount of evidences against that view will go a long way in helping young people understand the truth about where the universe came from. That, that's right, yeah. And in addition to understanding why evolution doesn't work and where it's wrong, having apologetics training in church in, in Sunday school and, and throughout the youth group. And, and by the way, apologetics means giving a reasoned defense, giving reasoned arguments for the truth of the Christian faith. We need that kind of training in churches today and in homes as parents raise their children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now that kind of training would include teaching uh, to answers to common questions that people have about the Bible, and, and uh, people will have a lot of questions when it comes to Genesis 1 to 11. Yes, they do, yeah. Uh, questions like, how do you fit dinosaurs in the Bible? And what about natural selection and the ape man and Noah's Ark and the flood and many others like that? That's right, yeah. Now, when we come back, we're gonna add support to, to what we just said 
We'll be back in just a minute. In Job 40, in response to Job's questioning of God's wisdom, God sets out his credentials and challenges Job to answer a 77-question creation science exam. He says to Job, Brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. The exam covers the breadth of God's creative power, mentioning the wonders of many animals that we are familiar with, such as the lion, raven, deer, ox, and ostrich. Finally, there is Leviathan, a terrifying aquatic creature with an impenetrable hide impervious to harpoons, fearsome teeth, and a back covered in rows of shields. It even has firebrands streaming from its mouth and smoke from its nostrils. Though this may sound mythological to us, Job recognized it as a real creature. Indeed, one candidate from the fossil record is Sarcosuchus, a 12-meter or 40-foot monster with an unusual bulbous cavity at the end of its snout that could conceivably have been used for mixing fire-generating chemicals. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. Well, if you just tuned in this week, we're talking about understanding why it is that so many young people who grew up in the church will leave the church when they get out on their own, when they go to, go to university, for example, and what can be done to fix that problem in the future. That's our topic today. Yeah. Now, in last segment, we mentioned CMI's documentary, Fallout. Yes. Uh, it really highlights the need for creation apologetics for young people in Christian homes and how effective it is in stopping the massive exodus of young people from our churches. The teaching inoculates them to evolutionary ideas. Of course, uh, some of you are probably thinking, yeah, but Creation Ministries, uh, you guys are probably pretty biased about this. Yeah, (laughs) right. It's like like get some creation resources, buy buy some CMI books and go to the website. It might seem pretty convenient uh, to conclude that, that conclusion coming from us, right? Mm. But it's not just CMI that's saying this. To back this up, we're going to look at a few studies done by a couple of different groups And the first is a major 2016 study done by the Intelligent Design Group, the Discovery Institute. It's called Darwin's Corrosive Idea, the Impact of Evolution on Attitudes about Faith, Ethics, and Human Uniqueness. And no surprise here, what they found was, ta-da, that that evolution makes people less likely to believe in God. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Shocker. (laughs) Yeah, really. No, this this shouldn't be a surprise to anyone who's uh, been engaged with the creation-evolution debate for a while because evolution is supposed to be purely naturalistic. Right. No yep. supernatural activities are required to supposedly evolve from nothing to everything. Um, by the way, you can find details about the biggest science-related ideas that have made the existence of God less believable for atheists uh, at creation.com slash corrosive. Yes, and in that article, which summarizes some of the study's findings, it's actually not just evolution, but also the Big Bang and suffering that are stumbling blocks to people believing the Bible, which have led people toward atheism. Yeah, and that highlights the error of organizations like Biologos, who promote theistic evolution as the only viable view for Christians in the age of science. Uh, But even though they call themselves a Christian organization, they don't even defend Jesus as the creator God as revealed in the book of Colossians. Right. Uh, You know, in Colossians 1.16, it says, For by him, referring to Jesus, all things were created in heaven and on earth, Visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. That's right. Now, from BioLogos' own website, they have an article titled, On What Grounds Can One Claim That the Christian God is the Creator? And their response, again from their website, is, The creation story of BioLogos is compatible with many faith traditions. Muslims, Jews, and Christians alike can align their faith with the BioLogos account of our origins. And there is no way to give a scientific proof for one monotheistic faith over another. Well, so much for being a Christian apologetics organization. As a Christian ministry, they defend Islam as much as they defend Christianity. Right. And they claim that exactly the opposite of what we're finding in these studies. So they say that if you teach biblical creation, that's what will drive people away from Christianity. Yes, right. So... By, by twisting scripture, especially Genesis, to try to not only fit in the millions of years time scale that evolution needs, but also evolution itself. And then you, you, just, you just chuck Genesis, chuck what's written in Genesis about God creating an insert evolution, beginning with a big bang, and then hydrogen gas, and ending with you know, billions of years later yeah. with people. That's going to help. Yeah, and promoting that in churches, uh, you know, that's supposed to make people see how trustworthy the scripture is. How's that going to work? 
So they say that teaching biblical creation will uh, cause people to reject Christianity, and Creation Ministry says that teaching evolution makes atheists out of people. So one of us has got to be wrong here. One of us is wrong. <laughs> uh, and, and surveys like this one show that teaching evolutionary ideas is what atheists point to when, when you ask them why they don't believe in God. Mm. The, the most effective way to promote belief in God's Word is to proclaim its truth confidently right from the very first verse, and to show how science supports, how there's evidence that supports what God's Word says. Not by twisting Scripture to try to make yeah. it conform with materialistic ideas, right? Yeah, exactly. So while they're, they're probably well-meaning in trying to harmonize Scripture with evolution, they're actually deferring to evolutionism as their authority. And yes. in surveys like the one we're talking about today, um, they show that their thinking is completely upside down on this issue. Yeah. So the Intelligent Design Movement's uh, study provides even more backup for what the Fallout DVD shows. When we get back, we'll reveal the findings of the most extensive study ever done on youth and religion. Are you skeptical about Christianity? Perhaps you're a Christian but know someone who won't consider Christianity. Christianity for Skeptics is one of CMI's most popular books. Written by Drs. Steve Kumar and Jonathan Safati, this powerful resource refutes many attacks on the Christian faith. It contains cutting-edge research, solid theology, and a summary of the Christian roots of science. Questions about Islam, atheism, suffering, evidence for God, and more are answered. Full of bright, catchy illustrations and a sleek modern style, this book draws in any reader. Purchase this resource and many others at creation.com. On this week's episode, we're talking about why youth leave the church, and we're just in the process of providing some support for what we've suggested is a powerful solution to keeping youth in the church. In the church, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to reference another survey, uh, this, the conclusion from the Gospel Coalition's article titled, Fact Checker, Does College Cause Young Adults to Lose Their Faith? It reads this way. In the last few years, social scientists have found that the religiously undermining effect of higher education has disappeared. Okay, now it references an in-depth research an in-depth study done by, in-depth research done by the National Study of Youth and Religion that shows that higher education is not the faith killer that it once was. Okay, <laughs> hang on a second here. Uh, CUI speakers around the world often describe the negative effects that evolutionary indoctrination in the education system has had on young people from the Christian homes. That's so right. yeah. does this study uh, contradict what we've been saying? Well, uh, the, the study was done under the direction of Christian Smith, professor of sociology at the University of Notre Dame, and it was, it was a massive study conducted over a 16-year time period from 1999 to 2015. It's the most extensive sociological project on youth and religion ever undertaken. It sampled over 2,000 13 to 17-year-olds from all over the U.S., it, it collected data on all, from the participants in a variety of different ways, including ongoing mm -hmm. extensive personal interviews over many years. Yeah, the study started with people in their teens and continued into their uh, mid to late 20s. And it asked in-depth questions regarding faith, spirituality, family, moral behavior, and other things. Before the mid-90s, studies showed that higher education definitely made a negative impact on students' faith. Uh, but this new study concluded that... Among recently surveyed college students, 2.7 times more report that their religious beliefs have strengthened during their college experience than, say, their beliefs weakened. Okay, so what changed? <laughs> I mean, some, uh, well, some reading the study may think that uh, there's been a big turnaround and the church isn't losing young people at the rapid rates often reported, but the Christian church in Western nations is still going downhill, still declining. Yeah. Uh, for example... The American Culture and Faith Institute's 2016 survey concluded that during the past decade alone, there have been huge declines in the proportion of people who claim to be deeply spiritual, that's down by 21%, who say their religious faith is very important in their life, that's down by 16 points, who claim to have made a personal commitment to Jesus Christ that's still important in their life, that's down by 12 percentage points. Mm, yeah, so belief in God, Trust in the Bible and reliance on Jesus alone for salvation have all declined a lot. Yeah, they're still going down. In the United States, less than one in five adults believes that absolute moral truth exists and is defined by the Bible. Yeah. So the big picture of a church exodus remains the same. 
and high percentages of young people from Christian families still tend to fall away from their religious upbringing. What this is actually meaning is that young people don't abandon their faith at college or university age, but they do it earlier on. Earlier on, yeah. yeah. It seems likely that the students that thrive in higher education are the ones that already had solid faith going in. It's reasonable to conclude that they were already exposed to apologetics and taught how to defend biblical truths before entering higher education. And, and again, this is exactly what the interviews from, from our Fallout video support. Yeah, yeah, so the takeaway point then is that young people who don't get apologetic preparation, uh, those who aren't equipped with answers to faith-hindering questions uh, when they're young, are indeed more likely to reject the Christian faith. Yeah. And, yeah. and putting all the survey results together suggests that they're checking out earlier rather than later. Yes. And, and this matches exactly uh, what we captured on the follow-up video. Yeah. Uh, now again, the follow-up video shows only uh, obviously a small selection of university students in the U.S., but as this new survey shows, the results can be reasonably extrapolated to the majority of young people. Now when we get back, we're going to look in, in more detail into the specifics of the National Study of Youth and Religion's findings. We'll see you in just a minute. In 1947, a crash landing occurred in Roswell, New Mexico that people still talk about. According to many UFO believers, aliens from another world crash landed their flying saucer and the US government has tried to cover it up ever since. This claim was given impetus with the release of a 1995 documentary that claimed to show genuine footage of autopsies on aliens that were recovered from the crash site. But the credibility of this film experienced its own crash landing when one of the actors paid to take part in the documentary publicly confessed it was a hoax. So what really did happen at Roswell? Well, 1947 was the beginning of the Cold War and the USA was secretly monitoring the Soviets via weather-type balloons with specialised monitoring equipment. When one crashed on a ranch at Roswell, they wanted to keep things secret so that the Soviets didn't know they were being spied upon. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. All right, our subject this week is understanding why young people leave the church. Yes, and we're just discussing the most extensive survey ever done on youth and faith. In an online video explaining the National Study of Youth and Religion's findings titled How American Youth Misunderstand Science and Religion, Professor Smith specifically addresses how the topic of science affects youth in America. Oh, science affects, yes. His mm -hmm. research indicates that 7 out of 10 college-age uh, emerging adults believe that there's a conflict between science and religion, and that religion is, quote, always the loser. Hmm. Now, however, again, these conclusions were reached earlier on in life. He says by age 13, 70% of youth across all Christian denominations indicate that they strongly agree that the teachings of science and religion often ultimately conflict with each other. Yeah, and, and the summary of his research is, nearly all American youth associate science with evidence and proof, but associate religion with blind faith and private subjective opinion. Right, yes, but in Smith's presentation, it's important to note that there's no indication that he's making the vital distinction that we've talked about many times on Creation Magazine Live before, the difference between science and history. Mm. So what Smith is referring to isn't actually a conflict between science and religion, mm. but the evolutionary history contrasted with biblical history. Right. Yeah. By science, uh, he isn't referring to chemistry and biology and physics and those kind of things. Right. Yeah. Uh, he sometimes says science, but what he should be saying is history. Yeah. Uh, this is reflected in the quote Smith uses in his presentation from uh, one of the study's participants. And he says, I mean, there's proven scientific fact, and then there's what's written in the Bible, and they don't match up. So it's kind of whatever you want to believe. There's fact and there's a book. And some people just don't want to believe the truth of science. Hmm. <laughs> Evolution is not a proven scientific fact. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a belief about what happened in the past. So it's right. outside yeah. of the realm of science. Yeah. You know, there's no doubt that living things change over time and yes. changes can be observed genetically. That's science. Yeah. Uh, but the types of changes that scientists observe aren't the types of changes that will evolve a single cell into a human. Right. Yeah. Wrong kinds of changes. Yeah. Creationists and evolutionists don't argue over the observations of science. It's the teaching of evolutionary history and then calling it science 
that drives young people away from belief in the Bible. Right. You know, because they're taught evolution as fact in science class, yeah. it appears to have a veneer of scientific credibility that often outweighs what they've been taught in the Bible. Yeah. But yeah. in reality, it's really one belief about the past versus another belief about the past. You know, no one has observed either of these two histories. Right. Yeah. Creation or evolution. Yeah. As, as we've said many times before. Yeah. Professor Smith's research also contains a, a giant clue as to what the antidote to this huge problem of youth falling away from the churches. Look at this quote. We did look at which teenagers are the ones that are most likely to say religion and science can integrate fine. They're not in conflict. Which are the ones who had the combination of the answers that said it can all work together? The one factor that put kids way up there is that they went to private Protestant schools. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay, of course, Protestant Christian schools are more prone to teach the scientific evidence for biblical creation, uh, at least more so than religious schools that may teach theistic evolution. Right, yeah, that's true. Uh, all of these survey results were captured in our mini documentary Fallout. This 27 minute video features interviews with students so you can hear for yourself about their background and why they stayed in church or left the church. We've been, we've been talking about this thing since yeah. we started today. So here's a short clip from the trailer. Creation or evolution, which do you believe? Um, I'd probably have to say evolution. Evolution. Uh, evolution. Is there any powerful argument that makes you think evolution is true that causes that confusion? Um, I think the studies that have been done on uh, apes and monkeys are pretty compelling. I think that the you know, genetic sequence can change over time, over millions and billions of years. Uh, mostly fossil records and just databases of really just the fossil records. In your church background, were you ever exposed to any scientific evidence for creation by your church leaders, pastors, anything like that? Definitely not. Nothing in particular, no. Uh, no, I don't believe so. Do you uh, still attend church today or, or not anymore? Um, only for holidays. We kind of stopped going together as a family, but... Did your church leaders, student leaders, bring in any creation teaching that showed you there was scientific evidence to support the Bible's account of creation? Uh, yes. Yeah, we learned a lot about different um, creationist scientists and the proof of young earth creationism. What are you studying now? Biology. Biology, right, steeped in evolution, so, uh, but you're not convinced by the evolutionary arguments in your biology classes? No. Still attend church today? Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, every Sunday. Would it be fair to say then that being able to discuss creation openly at church uh, has helped strengthen you in that area, prepare you uh, for what you've learned here at college about evolution? Yes. From the mouths of students themselves, they confirm what Professor Smith is saying. Yeah. That young people who are taught creation apologetics from an early age and throughout their formative years are much more likely to continue in their Christian faith, even through the university years. That's right. And not be swayed by evolutionary right. arguments on yeah. top of that. So, yeah. as we said earlier, they've been inoculated against the false history of evolution and have answers for the true history recorded there in Scripture. And you can see these conclusions played out in, in real people's lives in CMI's eye-opening little video there, Fallout. Mm, yeah, so. you know, the most uh, exciting conclusion of all these studies and the Fallout documentary is that there is a solution to the problem of children leaving the church. More on that after a short break. For a more in-depth understanding of topics relating to the creation-evolution debate, the Journal of Creation contains peer-reviewed research papers that support the biblical account of creation, the flood, and the fall. One subscriber said, I always assumed that this journal would be too academic for me. Not so. I am a Christian with a very inquiring mind. With each issue, I find powerful articles that open doors and shine light on my understanding of the world. Each journal of creation is more than 120 pages and published three times a year. To subscribe, visit creation.com. We've been talking today about people leaving the church in massive numbers. In some denominations, recent surveys suggest around 90% of children who grow up in the church will leave the church once they're, they're out on their own. Like they go off to university, uh, get out from underneath mom and dad, and they're gone. These numbers are a nightmare for church leaders. Yeah, you know, yeah. Especially for youth pastors. I mean, 90% of their target audience is leaving the church? 
That means they're essentially unable to accomplish their goal in 90% of the people under their care. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's depressing. Yeah. And, and everybody is ready with some idea for how to keep young people in the church. Let's, some of them are, are more gimmicky, kind of bait and switch. Let's have a pizza night and we'll yeah. throw in a Bible study yeah, exactly. at the end and that kind of thing. But when the, when the data's in, what's gonna do the job of keeping people in the church? Teaching biblical truths and helping young people get to the point in their spiritual walk, in their walk with Christ, where they know mm -hmm. that the Bible is true and can refute attacks on Scripture that are so popular today. We, we, had, we had a student call us up a few years back, um, went to university, first day, the teacher walks in, he says, okay, who of you, are there any Christians in the class? And a few of the, she said a few of the people put up their hands and, okay, I want you to drop out of this course because you will not pass. <laughs> Incredible, just blatant yeah. attacks on, on Christianity. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, remember, it's the Holy Spirit that ultimately gets the it's, job. Though, yes, right? you're right. Of course, it's yeah. the Holy Spirit yeah. that does the job. Yes, ultimately. But, you know, just like evangelism, we are called to preach. That's our role in leading non-believers to Christ. Right. Uh, now, the Holy Spirit's role is changing their heart. You know, in Ezekiel uh, 36, 26, it says, And I will give you a, a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. So we're talking about discipleship, and there's our part, and then there's God's part. Right, yeah. And our part is getting into the Word, getting our children into the Word, our, our youth into the Word, uh, teaching them apologetics, mm -hmm. a, a reasoned defense of the Christian faith. Uh, that it's, start with apologetics training at an age-appropriate level, even in Sunday school. Maybe, maybe try something like instead of teaching Bible stories, you know, the story of, of, of the, the fishermen and the story here and there, call them the account. Right. It's the account yeah. of the flood, the account of this and that and so on. Um, the, the, if you want a, a parable of what we're talking about here, it's the parable of the soils from Matthew 13. The seed of the gospel is sown and it only produces a crop on the cultivated soil. By teaching in this way in your church, in your youth group, in your home, it, it kind of, it, it removes the, the yeah. rocks of evolutionary yeah. geology and the weeds of evolutionary biology so that the soil in people's hearts is prepared to receive the gospel and they grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, by teaching biblical truths along with apologetics, biblical truths take root and grow in people's lives. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Proverbs 22.6 comes to mind again, train up a child in the way he should go and even when he's old, he won't depart from it. So there's no reason why a young person properly equipped and discipled with good biblical teaching should abandon their faith. That's right, yeah, it, it, properly equipped. And that's, that's what CMI, that's what we're trying to do at the ministry. Exactly. Is to provide Christians the resources to equip young people throughout, this, throughout their, their formative years, mm -hmm. learning about the Bible and so on. And when you run up against those, those kind of faith hindering questions that prevent further spiritual growth, yeah. there are answers to those. Absolutely, yeah. The website has become a great tool. Yeah, Some, it's got know, uh, 11,000 11, and, and articles on it and growing. more by the time you watch this. Yeah, that's right. And then um, we shouldn't forget about the Fallout DVD that we've been talking yes, about. Yeah. Phenomenal resource, Yeah. you know? And it's not the kind of thing where we just cherry pick certain uh, participants and put the best clips in there. It includes all the results in that DVD. That's right, yeah. The magazine as well. You you can, you can view yeah. a free digital copy at creation.com slash free mag. If you like it, subscribe. That's what this show is based on, the content from the magazine. We'll see you next week.